I have a serious problem guys. I, I bought more mowers and whip snippers. I bought eight mowers and three whip snippers for twenty four dollars. These three whip snippers, I'm just gonna put all these six on eBay as a package deal. Um, then when I get a bit of money, buy a proper steel blower vac, hopefully from the dump, because I don't mind getting it second hand, a little bit cheaper. Um, and then put that blower vac, that blower vac, and that one up on eBay as a bulk lot, because they all don't really work that well. Um, now the mowers I got, this one here, the power torque, looks pretty decent condition, it's not seized. Um, I've got a few spares, I can probably, I don't know, just give that a coat of matte black paint or something. Um, what other ones do I get? This one here, um, it's, it's base is totally shit, probably just end up throwing that out, the base. This four stroke is pretty much the money maker out of the lot. Out of the lot. Got a quantum engine on it. Still starts a little bit. Yeah. But even if um, that engine is totally shit, I can just put a power torque on that base. Hopefully that's not the case though, because those quantums are good and the rest of the mowers are in the shed. So these are the other four here. Not that white one, I got that before. Another power torque. The base is in pretty good condition. Actually, not really. It's got a hole there, but I can put a I can fix the motor up and get, I don't know, 20 bucks for it to be alright. Or just sell as is. Probably not sell as is. Uh, this one here is a bit more of a collector's item, although not really. Um, probably just give it a wash. The catch doesn't really hold on that well. Just sell it as is. Um, I've sort of come to the conclusion that with these older ones, they are worth fixing, but unless they've got a catcher in a good condition, even if I know they work well, even if I know they're going to work well for 10 years, <coughs> um, people just don't see that. They want new, fancy looking mowers. Um, this one here, this one should be alright to, to fix. Um, and yeah, you can get well, about 50 bucks for these older style full crank motors. So another 50 for that probably. Um, so yeah, guys, I've got a problem. Really, I seriously do have a problem. And I went out to get them, got lost as usual, because um, I was driving about 30 k's and into the city sort of. And it was meant to work out that I was going to get home at about 2, 2:30, um, and unpack them all. With my, and then my parents get home at about 4:30, so from work. So they wouldn't, my mum and dad wouldn't know. But as it happened, my mum was at some meeting, and she came home early and sprung me. So that wasn't cool. But anyway, uh, she didn't really mind. Well, I know she does, but um, she knows I enjoy it, and she knows I can make money off it, so, yeah. Oh yeah, and I also cleaned up a bit. Um, moved a few things. Now I've got a bit more space over here. So, because I really do want to work on them in the actual shed. I hate having them outside and working on them. Um, that just pisses me off because it's like annoying. But yeah, cleaned up. There's my three spare power talk motors. Um, yeah, all these cowling covers and stuff. And the bloke who I bought them off, as I was leaving, I asked him about what oil he recommends for four strokes, and he said it does not matter. So long as you change it once, once a year, whenever, clean the air filter, do that general maintenance. It doesn't matter what oil he put, you put in it, and I truly believe that. And like I said in the other, on the other video, um, yeah, that's yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, like I said on the other video, change it regularly. It doesn't matter. I mean, Castrol is a decent brand, I guess. GTX 20W50, twelve dollars for five liter container. So that's about as cheap as you'll get it. Um, from all those mowers I got recently, I got a few bases like this. And Brendan V has been having trouble with getting that boss off. So I thought I'd do my best to get it off. I asked the guy how you do it. And he said you just sort of lay it on its side like that. Put something so pretty solid under there. And just keep hitting the little prick off to use his words exactly. Um, so I'll find something to rest it on and then try my best. It is dark out, so I might not be able to like do it, but I'll do my best anyway. Well, I got my boss off, Brendan. What I did is I put it in the vise, and I've got a vise which can turn around 360 degrees. Um, 
So I put it in the vise and twist it around so you can see that's like the jaws up there which would normally be like here. And then I put the nut on, grip that, that's just the door, and just hit that about three or four times and it's come off. Well, you could twist it because there's no keyways on there. Um, it's just a press taper and that's that's probably the easiest way you could do it. Um, I don't know how you'd do it if um, if like your vice doesn't turn around like mine. But you could even maybe just put a clamp, like a G clamp on it, and then hold the G clamp in the vise or something like that. Um, um, yeah, but that's how you get them off. That you just got to hit them off and. Yeah. I had a thought as to how you could get the boss off if you can't rotate your vise. I don't even know if you do have a vise or not, but um, this is I'll I'll do it and then show you what I what I mean. Doing what I was going to do with the vise was going to be too hard. So what you could do is pretend that the engine's still attached to the boss. Get two bits of steel like this. Um, clamp them on the boss. You probably need a bigger G clamp than this and one bit more stronger sit in between two bricks, pretend these are bricks, and then you could just hit the crank out. Um, that's probably the easiest way I can think of doing it. Unless you can rotate your vice like I can. But, yeah, that's what I'd be doing.